Swag is making more Golden Age of Tech OTs than ever before. And as the home of solo knots, Flag is now producing OT7 completions on an almost daily basis. What does it mean to be an OT? <laughs> what does it mean to be an OT? Yes, what does it mean to be an OT? To me it means virtually nothing. I'll tell you why. Because being something does not mean much to me. Uh, doing what is right for me to others and with others, it is that what matters. I don't have any idea about altitude or being better or any such thing and I hated that part in the church. When I went to Russia, people were, you know, oh, I touched him, I sat with him on the lunch table and that kind of crap. I hate that part. Status is very important in the church because it gives you protection from shit happening, okay? Uh, the more status you have, like OT8 or you're a trained auditor and you've done this and that, that helps you not get into trouble. But I hate that part of the whole scene. Natasha Claire, I went up straight to OT5. At a very, very, very fast speed. Bing, 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 bing. OT6 and 7 went just like this. Everything that you've done comes together. I was able to go very fast up the bridge and here I am in the OT8. I, I would. I would rather just break the whole thing down and say, you know, you're on your own spiritual path and there are tools here that can help you. Spiritually, I don't think there is much difference between you and I. I mean, I've, I've done the whole no. bridge, I've done OT8, yeah. and you're a very, very spiritual person. Thank and you. I, I would say I would learn a lot from reading your book and I would learn a lot from just talking to you. And that is how I view every person on the planet. There are people that can teach me a lot, like my kids. My, my, you know, my three kids, when they were like three, four, five years old, I learned a lot from them, from their philosophy about life, etc. And some of that is more than I got out to the OT levels, funny enough. So the whole status thing, I don't like it. Uh, but I see it's there, and it's very, a lot of people striving for it, to get protection, to be viewed as better, or, you know, the whole homo novice uh, scene. Can Scientology produce a spiritual master? It's like asking, can the ingredients make a cake? No, it cannot. Um, I don't think anybody can make a spiritual master except yourself, for yourself. Uh, there are tools, there are paths, there are uh, workable ingredients for the cake called spiritual mastery. Scientology it supplies a lot of tools that has helped me a lot. I was a very, very shy guy. I was a nerd. I was uh, socially inept. I wouldn't be able to pick up any girls before I was 18 years old. I, I couldn't read aloud in class without hyperventilating and being brought down to the hospital. It was a crazy, shitty scene for me socially. And the communication training helped me uh, overcome that. Me doing the communication training did that, not the drills themselves, right? And through my Scientology, uh, 25 years in Scientology, everything I've done, I've had gains from. But that is not... It's not Scientology's responsibility, it's my responsibility, utilizing the tools. But you can find similar tools in Buddhism, in Zen, in, I guess, whatever. Take a hike, go up into the mountains, sit there, watch the stars, buy a telescope, it will do you wonders. Now, all of these things facilitate the person to take responsibility for himself. And every person must find his own true path. And I find, as I said, a lot of true things in Scientology, it helped me a lot, um, more, some things more than others, especially the communication trainings, OT2, OT5, 6 and 7, uh, and 8, not for the reason that they say it works, but for my own reason. What's your take on condensing Scientology? For me, as a person, I would do the communication training, the solo course, OT2, OT5, OT7, OT8, and that's all I needed, really. I had gains from everything else, but this is basically what I needed. Another person might need something else, maybe in the reverse sequence, for all that I know, but I would like to, you know, get rid of the whole evaluation, which it re really is. It's a spiritual huge evaluation to say this is the steps you need to do in this sequence because it's all one size fits all. See, That's not true. A lot of spiritual paths liberate consciousness. They liberate you from things that are besetting you or troubling you. 
but then they take that free attention or free consciousness and they convert it to an identity and it makes it worse. This is what happens in Scientology. As you go up the bridge, uh, most people get more liberated, I got more you know, creative power, I started doing uh, music, I started creating artwork, I, I did the stuff that I couldn't even dream of doing before, this happened on OT2. Now, as this happened, I got more liberated, yes. But at the same time, the demands came down the command channel on how to uh, be, how to do, what to do, what not to do, how to behave, the whole program of the OT ambassador. This is what you should do every day, every, you know, every waking hour. All of that transforms that freedom into an identity, and that identity becomes a slave for the church management. That results in cognitive dissonance. It does. You're OT8 and yet you must obey, you must be, you must do. And you must start lying because every time you get a cough or, or you, you know, something happens to you, you must shield it because you're an OT8. And anything that comes out, oh, the guy is sick, he can't be sick, he's OT8. Therefore you must start lying, you must hide yourself whenever it's something wrong. If you're depressed one day, you got to put on a smiley face. Not because you need to put on a smiley face, because you don't want Scientology's PR to be damaged. As I blog, as I release freely my own thoughts into the internet, um, I become free of that identity. Where to the point I'm no longer a Scientologist, I'm not an independent Scientologist, and don't give a flying about the technology really, except it's a bunch of tools that might help people just as any other bunch of tools. So people must find their own path. I found mine, I'm working on my own path further than Scientology. I will do more stuff in Scientology, also because it's a, it's a pool of tools for me. But the identity of a Scientologist, no, I don't want it. I don't want any such forced identity. Would you do Scientology all over again? If I were back in 1984, with the knowledge I now have about what would happen, I would do it all again. Just because it worked for me. But I, that does not mean I would necessarily say it would work for another or that they should do what I did.